Thank you. <laughs> Massive game coming up this weekend. It is El Derby Real Madrid against Atleti. And let's get into this because there's a lot to talk about here, especially with Carlo Ancelotti coming out to talk about the current situation with Antonio Rudiger. He said, I, I think he can recover. We have two days to try to get him back. It's a big blow to the thigh. He is a warrior. Good news, Ali. I mean, because the alternative would not be good news. It's necessary news yes. for Real Madrid and Carlo Ancelotti. And Carlo Ancelotti is essentially saying he's going to play. Uh, what happened to Antonio Rudiger actually comes from a challenge that he initiates on Mainz Greenwood. Somehow he gets the worst of it. What I think it's a contusion, a muscle contusion, basically a dead leg, if you will. I'm sure that Antonio Rudiger will feature. And why is it necessary? Well, because Real Madrid have no center backs left. It's Nacho and that's it. Chuameni, who was playing alongside Nacho once Rudiger left the field, well, he got himself a yellow card after the game, which means that he is suspended for the Atletico Madrid match. Guess what? Who's going to play center back? You're going to put Camavinga there? If, if, if indeed Rudiger is not available, I'm not quite sure that that's the answer. And so you start searching for options if you are Carlo Ancelotti and you don't quite have the options available. So it's necessary for Antonio Rudiger to be back for the game on Sunday. On the Real Madrid side of things, who are you looking forward to seeing in this clash? Uh, it has to be the guy, the one and only Jude Belling. Because I don't quite see anybody in the midfield of Atletico Madrid that can keep up with that sort of athleticism. Frank, answer me a few questions here. First of all, how would you have defended Jude Bellingham? And secondly, who does he remind you of from when you were playing? How to defend against a player who has everything? It's, it's, it's very hard. Yeah, you can defend if you are Manu Petit or Patrick Vieira maybe at their best at the time. It was possible for them to cope with those, but they were absolutely fantastic players as well. And uh, for me, it would have been very hard. I mean, you have to isolate him to make sure he doesn't get the ball. Uh, you have to put him outside and make sure that his teammates don't give him the ball. Uh, as Ali explained, as we saw in the last action, he is crazy good in transition. And to remember somebody, he went. He, he struck me. Uh, he struck me. Sorry, immediately. Fernando Redondo playing for Real Madrid. Also played with the number five in the middle of the park. Fantastic left-footed, uh, playing for uh, Argentinian player. I mean, that was that. Was, when I see Bellingham and the class and and, and the, the the way he, he performs and the way he he, he, he held he held his his body made me think of the class of a Redondo. And you can see, okay, go on, on, the, on maybe some on YouTube or, or on internet to find some actions from Redondo. You will see some beautiful actions from the guy who was able to go into transition, was able to defend like Bellingham does and, and bring the ball, secure the, the, the center backs, uh, helping them and then going forward to, to help and score goals or assist Raul, for example. Fantastic player who had knee injuries when he went to Milan after leaving uh, Real Madrid. But when I see Bellingham, really I see Rodrigo. I see the same type of player who are so crucial in a defensive way and offensive way. So what do you make of this comparison? Well, I, I love it. And I think Fernando Redondo is one of those players that perhaps is underappreciated mm -hmm. and underrated as to how good he was when he was at his very best. What's unique about Jude Bellingham is that he is a combination of different types of players. And he, he, when you watch him run with the ball at his feet, and if we're going to go with South American players and we'll stay on that theme, you watch him run with the ball at his feet. And it's kind of like Kakai used to be, that he seems to get faster as he's running with the ball, which is unlike most players. He actually seems like he's gliding with the ball, and Kaká used to do that naturally and effortlessly it's the same way that Bellingham does. When you see Jude Bellingham running from a deeper line to be an option inside the 18-yard box as a finisher, and this is a player that I think Frank is going to remember from his time in Marseille, Enzo Francescoli, El Principe, that he would run from sort of that attacking midfield uh -huh. position and, and go inside the 18-yard box and finish chances in a manner that were so clean. And again, there is an elegance. And I think what I can tell you about all these players that we have mentioned, Fernando Redondo, Kaká, 
or Enzo Francescoli, El Principe. And if you don't know Enzo Francescoli, look him up online, please. Do yourself a favor, great player from Uruguay. It's the elegance with which they play the game. Now, you have in Jude Bellingham elegance, but then you have explosion, you have athleticism, you have a guy who is a physical presence because of his size. That's why you look at him and say, and, and Frank just said it, he has everything because he's a combination of the best attributes of a lot of players that we've seen over the course of the years watching this game. Frank? Just one, what, just one thing about uh, 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 Enzo Francescoli. That was Zidane's favorite player. So we run mm. into circle, you know, Bellingham, Redondo, Francescoli, Zidane, fantastic players and uh, different class. Uh, I mean, Bellingham belongs to those players already. Already. We all mm. know if he doesn't get injured until he, the end of his career, he's going to be those kind of players. That's for sure. That's, I can sign it immediately. Uh, yeah, and we know one of Zidane's four sons is mm. Enzo. OK, so there, you, there go. you go. All right, Atleti, we must talk about them. It is hard to look past Antoine Griezmann right now. Well, you can't look past Antoine Griezmann because we associate everything positive that happens in the attack with Atletico Madrid with Antoine Griezmann, but it's, it's really been the case over the last month or so. We saw in the Supercopa the individual goal that he scored against uh, Real Madrid and, and how good it was of an individual effort. But I think that's an outlier. I, I, I think... What he does really well for Atletico Madrid in, is that in his game of association, he gets everybody else involved and the players around him become better because of the level of play currently from Antoine Griezmann. He has been outstanding. Yeah, let's continue with the talk about the Frenchman, Frank, because just on top of all that talent he has, he works so hard as well. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I mean, when he signed for Barcelona and I was in Barcelona that summer, I was really wondering if, would, if we would be a success, according to what we saw before with Atletico Madrid. He went back after that bad experience to Madrid, Atletico Madrid, and you say, is it, is it going to be convincing to, uh, to the fans uh, enough, you know, he's going to work hard? He did what he had to do. He was smart enough to put his head down and to work so hard to make sure that the fans will follow him. And he worked very, very hard to go, to go back to his best. It feels like it's, he's at home. It's his cocoon. He needs um, uh, Simeone like a father because his father trusts him. And that's what it is. It feels that he has the confidence of everybody and the trust of all the fans right now. And it's, it's invincible. He's so smart on every run that he makes, every decision that he makes, every, every um, way that he thinks the, the, the football right now works very well. I mean, I love everything about him right now, but he's, uh, he's uh, how do you say, he's, the, his air color. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> was, well, yeah. sorry, Frank, we can't do much about that. Yeah, you can't, can't have it all. You and I both know that can't have it all, Frank.